everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Join a Great Day. Today, we've got the C8R out right next to me, and um, if you're new to the channel, by the way, my name is Austin. Welcome to the Speed Phenom YouTube channel. As many of you know, we just got this car a couple months back. We were like one of the first ever to take delivery of a new C8R Corvette, and it was just so exciting. For such a long time, I was looking forward to getting the, the most track-focused model, I guess you can say, of the Corvettes, and to be honest with you, the, the C8R was the model that was aimed most at us track going enthusiasts, right? Because it's got all the special badging and striping that you want for a track car, right? It's got its numbers on it, so when you go to the track, you're always number three. If you've seen the back, you know what I'm talking about. It was just the most cool version out, and I was just so pumped to finally get it. We took delivery again, and it's been so amazing. We've got um, PPF from our amazing friends over at Elite Finish, and also S-Tech PPF. They protected the entire front head and also all the high impact points of the car itself is perfectly like immaculate and just set up to be um, ran, ran hard at the racetrack. So that is why I really do enjoy driving this vehicle. And also, if you don't know, I previously owned a, a 2020 CA Corvette and I put like 26,000 miles in the car. It was just so much fun driving that many miles in the Corvette because we were like one of the first to get that car as well. And um, so many people out there say, don't ever buy a first year Corvette or first year of anything that is a new generation. Well, we proved you wrong because we had no issues issues at all with our um, first CA Corvette, that being from 2020, and we also tracked that car, right? Laguna Seca, um, Willow Springs everywhere, and uh, we did a good job, I think, sharing what these cars can do, pioneering that, because this was the first ever mid Corvette, and people didn't know what to expect. Having my McLaren, I can tell you firsthand, Corvette has finally moved to the next level. When I'm at the track with like the C8R recently at Laguna Seca, I'm pushing the car hard and I'm driving next to Porsches and then even like a 458. And it's funny because we have an exotic layout now for an American sports car, right? I cannot wait for the Z06. Since my passion is mainly off going to the racetrack, running cars hard, and just getting and extracting all the performance possible. I think the Z06 is just gonna be so amazing. And everything that I wanted to see be improved on the Stingray has been improved for the Z06. We have um, more horsepower, better powertrain. Not just that, we have better brakes. This car uses four pistons, I want six pistons. Not just that, we got six pistons and also a carbon ceramics on the Z07 model. And I, I wanted more aero, right? To push the car down harder for for um, high speed corners to give us much more grip, more downforce. And uh, the Z07's got that. So overall, everything that I wanted out of the normal Stingray, I wanted to see be improved, has been improved for the Z06, which is why the car just speaks to me so much. I mean, like literally dreaming about how this car can be better, they have delivered upon that with the Z06. And I love flat plane crank engines, having owned a GT 350R. That car was so much fun, it really was, because rewinding to 8250 RPM, then speed shifting to the next gear was so addicting. And the best part was, uh, not just the RPM power band, but it was the sound, because nothing else sounds like a GT 350R. <laughs> It's not the conventional um, layout for a flat plane crank V8, I'll be honest with you. And the displacement's in the higher end, but with the new Z06, we have more displacement, right? 5.5 versus 5.2, and we have a lot more horsepower, 670 horsepower in a normally aspirated um, flat plane crank V8. This is literally getting up there next to the exotic cars. The V10 Lamborghinis, majority of them don't make that much horsepower. And this is a V8 doing the job, so that is why I'm so pumped about it. Anyways, though, making this video because having this car, it is essentially the most limited and one-off version of the C8 Corvette. Speaking with um, people from Chevrolet, it's made clear to me how the new Z06 isn't quite numbered like the C8R, and it is the most limited version they're making as of now because we're gonna see thousands of Z06s out there. This car, the C8R, is limited to just 1,000 units, and that is combined 
with um, coupes and convertibles, gray and then also accelerate yellow. I love the way it looks and it drives so um, nice and well balanced with that LT2 pushrod V8. But seeing the new Z06 again, it's just calling my name. And if we were to sell this car for the Z06, it would allow me to get like a maxed out version with the exposed 20 inch carbon fiber wheels, a Z07 package with all the exposed carbon fiber ground effects and the carbon strike brakes. It would be um, a lot of money <laughs> going down that route, maxing it out. And by selling this car, I'd be able to do that. I'd sell this and transfer all the money I'd get from this into a Z06 and buy another Chevy. <laughs> um, so if you look at it, we have an interesting proposition. I'm making this video just to kind of get all of your um, advice and input because this car is extremely hard to get and we got one we lucked out and each one is even number two on the inside. We've got a sub 10 number, which is insane. I can't, can't believe that happened. I'm so thankful to have had the opportunity to get this car and share with all of you what it can do, right? Laguna's sake of getting down, putting down the fastest lap yet with a C8 uh, is it's exciting. And I want to keep providing these kinds of uh, experiences and coverage because here on this channel we're a big community right and so many of you love Corvettes and and I love sharing again what these cars can do so it's a win-win for all of us if you think about it so, so please let me know in the comment section down below sh should we sell this for the Z06 if I don't sell it then I probably wouldn't be able to get a maxed out Z06 because I think it's gonna change substantially a normal Z06 would probably be around like 90 grand and I'm thinking like maxed out 140, 150. And with California tax, we're looking at close to $200,000. That's a lot of money. That's more than like a GT4 RS, I think. That's more than a 992 GT3. Actually, the same price, same price. I'm counting in with tax, but with tax on those, you're looking at probably even more. So we are in the ballpark for the uh, crazy exotic competitors and uh, considering how hard it is to get these new cars and also the value of money keeps constantly changing, selling this would make me uh, financially able to be locked and loaded for that new Z07, Z06. Just wanna get all your opinions again. Real quickly, I wanna pause the video right here. Make sure to subscribe, hit that subscribe button right now if you love this kind of content with these amazing performance cars and using them as what they're meant for, not letting them sit in the garage as a garage queen. This is what it's all about. And if you enjoy watching um, cars being used properly um, for what they're meant for, again, subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. Also, make sure to pick up some merch on the channel. Please show your support it really does help because it allows us to keep running these cars and using them for what they're meant for because it's very expensive to doing so your support really means a lot anyways back to the point point. and let me make this clear right here because I know we're probably getting comments regarding about keep this car because in like 40 years from now it's gonna be worth a lot more money in my opinion I, I'm just not really a car collector I'm, I'm 21 years old and I want to keep trying to experience as many of these amazing performance cars as possible. I'm not saying I won't be a collector in the future if I get like a, a new variant of like a McLaren F1 or a Zora. That could be a different story, but, but right now I'm just having so much fun sharing with all of you these amazing vehicles and their capabilities. And I know that I could possibly mod this car and get a lot more horsepower out of it and just go crazy with it and uh, even like put like a wide body. But in my opinion, I just feel like when you look at the Z06, that car is engineered, right? You have Chevrolet and their multi-million dollar budget, right? Huge budget. They have their amazing team of individuals who are engineers in their, in their departments breaking down how they can make this car better. They have their racing expertise, right? Through GTLM and their Corvette racing racing department. I don't think the mods that I could necessarily do on a C8 or C8R would ever surpass a Z06. I see a lot of people throw tons of horsepower in their cars and do crazy, you know, modifications and then they go to the track and they blow up their engine or they damage all these components because I look at like this car again is engineered by a state-of-the-art company and state-of-the-art people. I would much rather uh, um, learn how to perfect my abilities as a driver to extract all that performance out of the vehicle instead of running and, you know, trying to find ways to make the car faster, but me not necessarily faster. That's not how I 
function. Honestly speaking, 99.9% .9 of cars I see out there that have all these crazy mods like Global Time Attack cars, they can't survive more than three laps. They blow transmissions up, they blow engines up. In my opinion, if you were to modify a car, you gotta do it right. What I'm trying to say is that you see a lot of people doing all these crazy mods, trying to sell products for other companies, but you want, if you're gonna upgrade a car, go about it like, this car's got PS4s, so let's put on some Cup 2s. Uh, camber, track camber. Um, racing brake fluid, let's do that. Suspension, upgrade suspension, yeah, that, that helps. Also upgrading cooling, and then finding ways to increase power, but not by using um, crazy uh, thousand horsepower kits. That's not gonna really help you. I see a lot of exotic cars out there doing uh, supercharger mods and tunes, and they're blowing up at the track again, because you have to look at a vehicle like an overall package, where everything works in harmony. It's like getting an Apple iPhone or another computer, the entire thing is engineered to work. You start messing with it and the functionality of how it all works gets messed up. They didn't just throw a supercharger on it like a Dodge Challenger and say, take this to the track. No, 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 no. They looked at the car as a whole. They put a wide body kit on it. They widened um, the mechanical grip that you would have with 345s. The arrow has been improved. You have underbody arrow with these side ducts that push the air outwards to give you um, more down force overall because you have more pressure pushing down on top. It's the car to buy if you're gonna go to the racetrack. Anyways, let me know again in the comment section down below, what do you think? Should we sell this for a maxed out Z06? I'm looking forward to reading what all of you have to say. Um, again, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to smash that like button really help me out. Also subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. I'll see all of you in the next episode.